Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we thank you today. We praise you for the covenants that we have with you. We're so blessed. The covenant of blessing, covenant of healing. Mm -hmm. And we praise you and thank you for it. In the sweet name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Greg, let's go over there. While I was praying, the Lord reminded me of this to the book of Ephesians. And uh, in the 11th verse, <clears throat> Wherefore, remember that you being in times past, gent not Gentiles anymore. Mm -mm. The, the goyim, the Gentile, is, just simply means someone without God. You were, mm -hmm. but not anymore. Right. Gentiles in the past who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. At that time, before you knew Jesus, before, back, back then, at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants, mm -hmm. plural, both of them. Yeah. The covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. If you don't have a covenant with God, you're without God. You may be a very, very religious person, but you can be just super religious and not know God. That's right. So <clears throat> covenants, both of them, covenants of promise. Amen. So whatever he said, is mine. You go over here to the third chapter. Now, there, now we talked about more than once the name change. Yes, sir. Uh, God changed, changed Abram's name to Abraham and he put Hashem in the middle of his name. God got in the middle of his name yes, when he, he made did. covenant yes, with him. Yes, he did. Did it with Sarah too. Did the same thing with Sarah. Yes, sir. Then Jesus changed Peter's name and he was Peter... For, Simon Barjona was his name. And when you read right in the beginning there, he came to Simon's house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. His name was Simon. Jesus changed his name. God changed our name yes, he did. when we made covenant with yes, him. Did. When did that happen? It happened when Peter told Jesus who he was. Yes. When he called on him, you are the son of God. You are the Messiah. You are the Lord. When he told Jesus who he was, Jesus told him who he was. Yes. Well, let me tell you who you are. And, and that's exactly what happens with us. When we acknowledge him as Lord, we make him Lord. He will then call you. That's right. Part of that family. Then in the third chapter, look at this. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom of the Father the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might or dunamis. Mm hmm how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with dunamis. Yes, sir. Power. power. By his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth and height and mm. to know. Now that word know there is gnosko. Mm -hmm. Very intimate relationship. Yes. It's the same word used in other places, and the man knew his wife. Right. Very intimate relationship 
with Jesus and his love. Yes. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now Hallelujah. unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Unto him be glory in the church. Glory to God. Throughout all ages. Throughout all ages. My God, yes. So that's, this, this, is, this is a serious covenant. Gentiles are fellow heirs. Yes. Even these guys with David are fellow heirs. They didn't go to battle. That's right. They didn't cross the creek, but they're fellow heirs. They're fellow heirs. My favorite part of this whole thing, and it's great that those guys got blessed that stayed there by the river. When they came back to Ziklag, that was a three-day march from being with the Philistines. They get there and they say everything's destroyed. They go to the brook Besor, and that brook, that's a 16 miles that they went further after they found out all their family's gone, all their stuff's gone. They go another 16 miles, and some of them are too, too uh, wore out to go any further. They stayed back. But my favorite part of that whole thing, Brother Copeland, is it didn't just go to those guys that were there. It went to people that weren't even part of the group. Mm -hmm. David will send blessing, part of the spoils back, to all these different cities in Judah. Why? They're in the covenant. They're part of the family that's named. That's right. They didn't even go to the brook. So he blessed people that weren't even in town with them, bless God. But because they're in covenant, they get part of it. All right. Let's go to the Gospel of John. Just because their name is Judah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, remember that the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th chapters and the 17th chapters of John are in that very deep covenant meal yeah. That's right. where Jesus revealed to them that he is Messiah. In the middle of the night, mm -hmm. that precious time, John is lying on Jesus' lap. And it's, oh, it's precious. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Brother Cooper, when he's talking to them, John is the only of the Gospels that has no parables in it. There's no parables. That's right. Remember when he spoke parables to them so that the others wouldn't understand? John is where he's speaking plainly to his covenant partners. No parables needed. I'm going to speak plainly to you. And that's what's happening that, in those chapters. That's right, Ed. Yeah. That's good, man. It is good. Now notice in the 14th chapter. Now, we just read that we were strangers from the covenants of promise. Mm -hmm. And in covenant with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 14th chapter of John. <clears throat> Tenth verse. Now, to put yourself Put yourself in that place. When I receive communion, I, and I so do it a lot, I, I just see myself in that place. And I, I see my John is there, I believe, on the right-hand side of Jesus, leaving, leaning over into his bosom. And I just see myself to the right hand of John. Mm -hmm. And I'm right there. Believest thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. Mm. Now, 
Look at that 12th verse. This is covenant. Yes, sir. This is what he's saying to them. Yes, sir. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, what's the, what is the key here? I will pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you, you forever. Forever. Spirit of truth. Yes, sir. Oh. Now, let me show you. Let me show you. You want to see Jesus in the story with David? Yes. In, in, in the 1 Samuel 30? Let me show you a type and shadow right here. <laughs> it's got me so excited. Because right in the middle, he, he goes and inquires of the Lord, what should I do? Puts on the ephod. The Lord speaks to him. Go get him. You're going to overtake him. You'll, you'll win this. 16 miles, they trek out there. They get to the, the uh, brook of Besor, which is, which is, it's not just a, you can't think of it as a little stream. This thing with heavy rains will swell up and it's a torrent. Um, you got you got to think of it as a ravine in a way and the elevation on either side, and they have to cross down. If you're going to set it up an ambushment for David, that's the place that you're going to ambush them as they're trying to, they didn't have four wheelers or tanks or anything. There wasn't a bridge. And so they're going through there. And I thought about Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. He's going through this thing. 200 of them can't go. They're on their way to go do what the Lord said do. And it's a very interesting thing. They come up against an Egyptian just laying out in the middle of the field. <laughs> just happened to be laying out. What, who is this guy? And David will even say that. Who, who left you? Who are you? He's a slave of one of the Amalekite raiders that had taken everything from him. David will feed this guy. He'll stop and feed him and tend to his, his uh, condition till he's restored. Why would you stop? You're in pursuit. You've been given the word of God to go and get these guys and you find this guy and you stop. It reminds me of Jesus with the Good Samaritan. Yes. So there's a type and shadow, son of David. Son of David. So Jesus is fulfilling in that story what David does right here. And he gets key information about where this group is and where his people are. And because he took the time. And I noticed in Jesus' ministry, every time he was going to do something is when he would get interrupted to do something else. Well, the classic example, that's Jairus. He's sure. on his way to that girl there at his hometown in Capernaum when the woman who had the issue of blood, she didn't have it anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, who had the issue of blood. I'm looking forward to knowing her now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. He, he, yes. She stops him, stops the whole thing to the point that they say, don't even trouble him anymore. She's dead. Now that man had to stay in faith because I'm the ruler of the synagogue. You're not even allowed in the synagogue. And you stop this whole processional. This Egyptian is stopping. He had a right to wonder about these 400 guys that are with him. What are we waiting on? Why are we messing with this? Why are we feeding this guy? But David knew that compassion moment of him. Isn't that good? To, to minister to this Samaritan, if you will, this Egyptian. And he recovers and he goes, the, this guy says, I'll show you where they're at, but don't give me back to my master. And he made a, he made a bargain with him but he took the time to minister to him. And so I'm seeing something in David. When he had acquired of the Lord, a compassion came on him, even for this Egyptian. Yeah. So it's a picture of Jesus. And when he tells the whole story of the, the good Samaritan who, who mended this guy. So you know what happens? They get the, they win the battle. They get all of their family back. They come back. The guys didn't, this is the story that changed your life with Oral Roberts. He said, um, we don't want to give those guys anything. They didn't go to battle, but David said, no, we we're going to give to them. Equally. Equally, like they did go to battle because they're covenant. But I love this right here toward the end of chapter 30. Um, it says in verse 25, 
should be from this day forward that he made it a statute yes, and did. an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Ziklag, so they've gotten everybody back to town now, he sent of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. Praise God. This is verse 26. Yeah. 27, to them which he were sent in of Bethel. the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold. Friends covenant. Yes. A present, my cross reference says, a blessing. A blessing. A blessing. So what did he do? He blessed the rest of Judah. He'd been living outside of Judah for about a year and four months. That's how long he'd been in the Philistine territory. To the point that it began to change his thinking to side with them to fight Jonathan, his covenant brother, and, and Saul. And while he was gone to battle with them, the Amalekites came and raided. He comes back, he gets it all back, and he says, I've got to bless. I've got to bless my brothers. Yes. I've got to bless my covenant. <clears throat> Because he's of the tribe of Judah. And so he sends blessing. Um, you can see in 27, to them which are in Bethel, and to them which were in the south of Ramoth, and to them which were in Zatar, and to them which were in all these places. He's sending blessing. Now, question. If, if the guys who went to battle with him got spoil, and the guys who were staying there at the 200 by the brook got spoiled. Where did this come from? This was David's portion. Yes. David is giving of his portion to his covenant brothers of Judah so that all of Judah are being blessed down all the way down to verse 31 and to them which are in Hebron yes. and all the places where David himself and his men were to, were, went to haunt. In other words, all the places that they hang out, all the places that have been good to them, that bless them when Saul was chasing him. He made sure that all of Judah was blessed in that thing. My, my, my. I don't care where you're at in the body of Christ, where you are in your partnership, all of, all of it. It's part of the anointing of the priest mm -hmm. from the head to the beard to the shoulders <laughs> to the hems of the garment. No matter where you're at in Christ Jesus in the body, you get part of the blessing. Pray. You're in the blessing. David, something clicked in David in all of this, and he came to himself and to his covenant when he inquired of the Lord. And uh, he's about to become the king because when you get into chapter 31, the guys who he was going to go to battle with will kill Jonathan, and they'll wound Saul, and Saul will, of course, fall on his own sword, kill himself. But David was about to, in, he's, he's going to inherit the kingship. He's going to become the king, but it's going to be done God's way. It's not going to be done by the flesh, right. by the way David had planned this. But er, he sends a blessing. Sir, that's what you do with your covenant partners. You send a blessing. Mm -hmm. You pray over them every single day. Yes. And that letter, that connection point. To bless them beyond measure. Yes, sir. Every time we get in the airplane, Every trip, every leg of every trip. That's right. We uh, plead the blood. And uh, for uh, protection against every evil spirit, every evil person, every evil, wicked plan of the devil is bound and stopped and thwarted. Mm -hmm. Ministering angels lift us up in your hands and keep us in all of our ways, lest our foot dash against a stone and bless our partners beyond measure according to the 91st Psalm. Yes, sir. That's at, at every place, they're constantly, continually on my mind. So David, uh, the Philistines will kill Jonathan. David will be, it'll tear him up. It'll, it'll hurt him so bad. I think it's going to hurt him because he's realized I would have been part of that. And that would have, that would have been terrible. He fights the Amalekites. So now here's the question. Who are these guys? Who are these Amalekites? This is an old enemy of Israel. These guys have been around since the days they came out of Egypt. Yeah. And God said that he's at war with the Amalekites to this day. So when you, start to, when you start to study now who it was he pursued and who it was he went after, 
then you see a whole new thing of who they are. And they come from one place. Amalek was Esau's grandson. Now, what about Esau? He despised what? The blessing. Yes, he did. He despised the blessing. He sold his covenant and the blessing out to his brother, his twin brother. And so these guys had been at war with Israel since that time. And we first find out about them with Moses when they had come out of the Red Sea. And, and God said to remember the Amalekites, but then he also talks about blot out the Amalekites. So it seems like a contradiction in the Word of God. Well, wait a minute. If I'm supposed to remember them, why am I supposed to blot them out? When the scribes start a new Torah scroll, they'll write the name Amalek first so that they can blot it out. They do that on purpose to practice mm -hmm. their pen. They'll mm -hmm. write Amalek and then they'll blot it out and then get the Torah scroll because they're fulfilling blotting out the name, which will happen in our future. Hadn't happened yet, but it's coming. And so David is fighting an ancient enemy that's against God and against the blessing and against the covenant. And this is why he goes out after them. It's a fascinating story. Um, when you get to the time of Moses, Amalek will attack them from the rear at all times, always trying to pick off the weak mm -hmm. and the, the slow ones, the ones with children. And that's what the enemy does today. He tries to pick off the fringes and the rear at all the time of all the partners. And he's been at war with God um, since the very beginning. And this is, the, this is the enemy that David is fighting. Saul had been commanded by the prophet to kill him, and he didn't do it. Remember, he did not, he didn't kill the king of Amalek, and now David is facing them again uh, as a result of this. So this is the enemy that God's going after, and if you understand that, you understand the battle we're in now. Yeah. Praise God. Yes, praise God. It's, uh, <clears throat> to keep your spiritual equilibrium about, about yourself. And you think about <clears throat> our elections and so forth and all the trouble that, that happened there. It's the same God and it's the same devil. We don't war against flesh and blood, no. but with principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and wicked spirits in the heavenlies. Yes. It's the same ones. Yes. It's the same devils that Moses faced in the presence of Pharaoh. Yes. And we're out of time. Oh. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.